Thank you very much for coming to our presentation. Uh, my name is Jay, and this is my colleague Ziguan. Uh, we are the product engineer and uh, developers from the Esri Raster development team. Uh, today, we're going to talk about how you can integrate imagery into your ArcGIS runtime location development. So, um, before I get started, this is a quick agenda of what we're going to cover today. And I, I'm assuming that most of you haven't been uh, working with imagery intensively with other ArcGIS apps. Is that correct? Or yes? OK, so I just want to briefly go through, give you an overview of what we already offered uh, in terms of rich set of functionalities available in ArcGIS desktop and server app to visualize and processing and analyze image data, uh, to do uh, image data management, and uh, to share imagery with image service. And then I'll move on to uh, talk about what's available in the runtime uh, SDK 100 release. Uh, before I hand it over to Zhuquan, and uh, uh, he will talk about uh, what we're planning for the uh, for the plan what we're planning for the in terms of new features we're going to release in this runtime SDK 100 release update one. So, yeah, just a quick overview of what we already, what we already have in uh, the ArcGIS desktop and server apps uh, nowadays. Uh, ArcGIS desktop apps and server apps already supports imagery data. Um, from various different sources. We have like um, over 100 uh, native imagery format that we support. You can read this imagery format directly into desktop and server, uh, display them, write them out, and uh, uh, serve uh, large image collections. We support over six different type of uh, remote sensors, uh, including uh, satellites, uh, aerial cameras, UAV US cameras, and even scientific data. Uh, such as uh, NetCDF, GRIP, or HDF. You can display those imageries, um, uh, like multispectral imageries, panchromatic imageries. Uh, we even support like, a, a full motion video uh, in ArcGIS. And in terms of functionality, we provide for you to process and analyze image data. We have over 200 different drill processing tools for you to work with image data. And we also have over 120 dynamic raster functions, uh, which can, uh, uh, you can use to apply on the fly processing uh, or analysis uh, functions on a raster data set. Those functions include, like, um, you can color balance your imagery, you can uh, mosaic uh, image collections, you can uh, do some change detection analysis, uh, you can do pen sharpening or uh, 3D building a measurement and uh, uh, automatically drill referencing. And uh, uh, we have a uh, very mature image management story, uh, which is based on this information model called Mosaic Dataset. And we, uh, if you use ArcGIS desktop or server app before, you will know that uh, this Mosaic dataset resides in a geo database. You can create this Mosaic dataset. It's like a, a, a view, a catalog view of image collections. You can create this Mosaic dataset in file geo database, uh, in enterprise geo database that supports various different kinds of uh, uh, SQL database, such as Oracle, Postgres, SQL Server. And uh, particularly in runtime uh, SDK, we actually support uh, you create mosaic data set uh, in uh, the SQLite geo database. <laughs> and the special things about uh, the key feature of the mosaic data set is um, it is referencing the uh, original image data source. It's not actually uh, moving the pixels from uh, your original image files into the geo database. And it provides you this dynamic mosaicing view. You're not actually physically merging them together. And it also supports the on-fly uh, raster functions uh, uh, that you can add to your image collection. And the mosaic data can be shared as image service through image server. You can serve, you can serve large collection of image data to your end client through this uh, information model. And uh, image server is our image sharing uh, story. And uh, uh, it is a image service is really powerful, scalable uh, sharing mechanism which allows you to share um, small to large image collections. Uh, uh, there are uh, image service, the large image service that we publish on Access Online that has millions of uh, imagery record in one single endpoint. And uh, because it is actually uh, published from a mosaic data set, uh, we also provide this dynamic mosaic pixels uh, through the image service. 
And you can also have fully customizable server-side on-the-fly processing functions uh, that you can define to serve with imageries or using the image service API to apply, apply those functions. And speaking of image service API, uh, you can use those APIs to do a lot of things like um, query for embedded metadata information uh, that was stored in image service. Like if you're serving thematic data, you can query for uh, different classes that you define for your, for your pixels. Uh, you can, uh, all classes, or you can uh, acquire the multidimensional information from uh, image service that was uh, served uh, from scientific data. You can also do uh, me measurations on image service. You can do identify and profiling on like uh, digital elevation model data. And there's many more uh, functionality to, to explore. So what our mission is, our mission is trying to bring in all this rich set of functionalities from uh, working with imageries uh, from the desktop apps and server apps to uh, runtime SDK developers. We are gradually uh, improving our runtime SDK so we can do more and more. So what we already have in runtime uh, SDK 100 release, we have this two uh, object. We have a Rust object, which supports, uh, which can you can use to support read, uh, read raster format uh, that we uh, support in runtime. This is a, a brief list of the format we support in the 100 release. There are some military format we support. We support the most popular IMG format, JPEG format, uh, PNG, and TIFF, GeoTIFF format. And, uh, but we don't have this uh, write image, save imagery capability yet in the uh, SDK runtime uh, 100 release. And we also have a subclass of Rust object. Uh, which is this mosaic data set raster object. Uh, this object, uh, well, you can use to uh, support read and, read and create uh, a mosaic data set, which is a um, information model that's in the SQLite database that supports uh, managing an uh, image collection. But the create is nowadays only available in the iOS and .NET SDK. And uh, uh, also one thing I need to mention that is, um, so, this mosaic data set that you're using runtime is actually different to the ones you create in uh, ArcGIS desktop apps like ArcGIS ArcMap or ArcGIS Pro. You need to, if you want to use the existing mosaic data set you create in the desktop apps, you need to convert it to this runtime version. Uh, we do provide tools for you to do that. And beyond that, um, we also have uh, a set of new uh, objects for you to display raster data. We have a raster layer object. Um, that you can create from raster Rust object, and uh, it can be added to the map, so you can actually render your image. And uh, we have uh, five different raster render class. Uh, you can apply it on your raster layer to change the visual uh, uh, effect of your pixels. And some of the renders are even unique to runtime, uh, like this blend render uh, that uh, what it does is actually meshing a uh, DEM uh, hue shade surface with your colored image to, to give you this uh, terrain effect uh, in, your, in your base map. Uh, this function is actually we develop uh, only for the runtime, but not even available in desktop and pro. And one of the uh, key functionality I, we, we want to emphasize is this raster function class. Raster function, um, it's a similar concept as the raster function. Uh, it's actually the same concept as raster function you're using uh, desktop apps. Uh, but in runtime, the raster function is created from JSON. So you need to define, we have a, a predefined a set of syntax for uh, 12 building raster functions. They're all written in JSON. If you want to create a raster function object, you need to load that JSON definition and uh, uh, initialize your raster function object from there. And the raster uh, function JSON object is actually compatible with the image server REST API's uh, rendering rule concept. So if you use image service REST API before, you see that you can apply on the fly uh, raster uh, processing, so an image service, and that is also defined in JSON. You can just grab those JSONs and uh, bring it into runtime SDK and create Rust function out of that if those functions are supported in runtime. So how do we connect all these things together? 
this is uh, the comprehensive diagrams. You can create a Rust object. Uh, you can initialize a Rust object directly from a Rust dataset uh, in your uh, uh, storage, or you can um, you can create a Rust function object. And in the Rust function object, you can get uh, a set of Rust function arguments. Uh, one of the Rust function arguments is actually a raster arguments which means indicates that you can assign a raster input to that raster function as input. You can set your uh, raster data to that raster arguments uh, in this raster function arguments object, and then uh, this raster function uh, will generate this uh, on-the-fly process pixels uh, based on your input and the definition of uh, the function, uh, definition of the processing defining the function. And then you can initialize a raster from the raster function. Once you have a raster function, uh, once you have the raster object, and then you can initialize a raster layer from that. And then you can add a layer to the map and set different type of renders. So uh, again, as I said, I want to specifically mention uh, the raster function in runtime SDK. Hmm. The Rust, the Rust functions that we are um, creating in, SDK, in runtime SDK is actually uh, the runtime native Rust function, which means uh, we have to basically rewrite every function uh, in the runtime. It's, it's only a subset of uh, Rust functions available in desktop apps. And, and it is not the same format as desktop apps where uh, for a fu Rust function template, you create the rft.xml file. But here, the Rust function are just purely defined in JSON. Since it's the same concept as Rust function using desktops, uh, Rust function also has this really powerful chaining capabilities for you to build custom uh, Rust function template. This is the example here. The way you want to do it is um, you can initialize the Rust function object and uh, uh, set it to another raster function, uh, raster function arguments, raster input, and then it's like chaining different type of processings together to build a really complex uh, workflow. And if you sh if I show in this graphic here, it's like you, ha you can have multiple functions like connecting to each other back to back in order to build this really complex uh, processing. And right now, all this building. Uh, right now, the functions you can use to build this function chain are there's 12 uh, building raster, raster functions. <laughs> and uh, one thing I can guarantee is, oh, sorry. One thing, one thing I can guarantee is we're working really hard to add more functions into Rust time. And uh, next year, you may see more functions. They won't be able to fit in one page. Uh, this is an example of the uh, JSON representation of raster functions or raster function template. Basically, in this JSON structure, you have a raster function name, and you have a series of uh, raster function arguments. Like in this particular hue shade processing, you, you can define like the, uh, the Z factors, the slope type, uh, atmos, and the altitudes, and uh, and. In all raster functions, there's always a raster argument where you can set the input raster or another raster functions if you want to chain them together. So next thing I'd like to show is a really um, fun thing, which is uh, the, I'm using the iOS SDK examples, sample apps to show you a, a bunch of demos that uh, uh, um, demonstrate the feature that I mentioned earlier. Oops. Let me just change the scale again. And move it here. So if you, if any of you have downloaded this iOS uh, app from the GitHub earlier, um, I want to mention, I just want to clarify that the, the demo I showed today is newly added. So we'll, we'll try to sync up later on with all those new examples. If you just get them right now from the GitHub, you won't have all the uh, functionality we're showing you today. So first of all, let's look at an example where um, how you can add a raster to map and apply render. This is a simple example. I can just show you the code behind it. Um, so you use the you initialize a raster object with the imagery that uh, uh, the source imagery. In this case, it's a, it's a TIFF, and then you will um, initialize another raster layer object and just. Uh, use the raster object you, you, you created with the TIFF imagery. 
and then it's pretty straightforward. You can add this rust layer to your map as your as your base map, and then you uh, update your update your map view with this new map object, and then you can create a render object. In this case, it's a RGB render to render this TIFF imagery, which happens to be a three-band image. And for every render, we have well-defined parameters you can set. And uh, uh, I'll show you in the app how you can set those parameters, what are the available parameters you can set for RGB renders. And then once you define this render, render object, and then just plug it into the Rust Layer's renderer uh, property. So in this app, go to a layer and then just choose RGB render. This is a color image uh, with RGB band. I can choose different uh, stretch type for this RGB render. These are all parameters of uh, RGB render. I can change some of those parameters. <laughs> Click render. It will change the display uh, of the Rust layer on the screen. Another example I'd like to show you is how you can read in a existing mosaic data set and create a uh, Rust layer out of the mosaic data set. Right, again, it can be really uh, straightforward. All you need to do is um, you need to get a pass of the mosaic data set because it stores in the SQLite data database. Um, you need to find a pass that points to that uh, SQLite file. In this case, I have a SQLite database that was named NetDM, uh, and I just try to get a URL, uh, the actual file pass pointing to that SQLite file. And I initialize a ArcGIS uh, Mosaic dataset raster object from there. And in this call, I'll use the SQLite file's URL, and then I need to provide the name, the Mosaic dataset name, that stores in the SQLite file, because one SQLite file may contain multiple uh, Mosaic datasets. And then, uh, because it's a uh, because Mosaic raster is a subclass of raster, so you can directly uh, create a raster layer from this uh, Mosaic dataset raster object, and then um, again uh, set your raster layer to the map as base map, and then uh, you can apply like uh, in this example a hue shade render on top of it. Right. So let's look at it. So this hue shade render. Uh, behind this thing is actually a mosaic data set that contains nine imageries. Right. It already applies hue shade, on, hue shade render on it, changing the hue shade uh, parameter settings, just like uh, you do it on any raster layer. And it changes on the, on the display. You can zoom in. And the, the performance really fast, although uh, there are multiple imageries uh, behind the scene. Now, um, let's talk about how you can uh, convert your existing mosaic data set if you have any in the ArcGIS desktop apps uh, or ArcGIS that you created with ArcGIS Pro. So um, this is the mosaic data set I created in ArcGIS Pro. Uh, this is the same mosaic data set I showed you in the previous example uh, that I uh, actually converted earlier. Uh, this mosaic data set contains, uh, well, actually it contains 10 imageries, not nine. <laughs> Um, we, in the, in, in the ArcGIS Pro app from version 1.4, uh, we provide this new tool called Mosaic Dataset to Mobile Mosaic Dataset tool. And, uh, this tool is basically you can use it to convert uh, the Mosaic Dataset you create in uh, Pro app or desktop apps in the file database and the Geo database. Uh, to the SQLite version of Mosaic Dataset. You just give the Mosaic Dataset uh, Hold on. Just give the mosaic dataset path. Yeah, you can give the uh, the mobile GeoDivs actually the um, SQLite file. Um, oops, this is. Uh, I just put it here. Test the SQLite. You will create a new SQLite GeoDivs if it does not exist, and you can just give a name. Uh, right, so just um, as simple as that. So um, one thing you need to be aware is um, this tool actually provides uh, a lot of capabilities. Like you can make a definition query just to sub just to uh, just to extract a subset of the image collection, and you can even define a geometry to clip out the region from there. 
And one thing to be aware is um, if the Mosaic dataset you're creating desktop apps has function that is not yet supporting runtime, uh, you, need, you will need to actually convert the image uh, into each individual image in the Mosaic dataset to uh, like a physical data set uh, in a folder. And then you have to move all the data along with your Mosaic data set to runtime. Otherwise, it won't work. So you have the option to actually convert each imagery uh, if they have functions applied in the uh, original Mosaic data set and convert it to a TIFF image. In this case, for example, a TIFF imagery and then move the whole thing to runtime app. That way you can use it there. And I also mentioned that um, in uh, runtime SDK 100 release, we have a capability for you to create Mosaic data sets natively in, uh, with runtime SDK. So this is an example of how you, how you, how you can do that. Um, uh, so what you need to do is you need to allocate a, a, a directory location where we can create a SQLite file. So um, here I'm just acquiring a temp directory uh, from my iOS device. And uh, I'll, I'll specify the name of the SQLite file, uh, which is create MD in this case, and the extension. And uh, for the mosaic dataset to be created, you need to specify a uh, projection. Uh, usually you use the same projection as data in, in your image collection. Um, with all this information, uh, and then you can call the uh, aesthetic method that is defined on the mosaic dataset raster object to uh, create mosaic dataset raster with uh, the database, database path. And it takes in a file URL, which is the URL of the SQLite file, and uh, it needs a name uh, that uh, you define for the mosaic dataset and the projection. Once you create this um, mosaic dataset raster object, um, and then you, um, you define where it can add image data from. So in this case, I'll need to provide the uh, path of my data location, which is uh, stored under this folder uh, called LA County. And uh, the add raster, uh, methods defined only mosaic data set raster object uh, will need to take a add raster parameters object. And add raster parameters basically is just different of settings uh, um, defined how you want to add those imageries. For example, it needs the uh, input directory URL, input directory path basically. And you can apply a filter on this, say that I just want to add TIFF imageries in my folder. And once you uh, set your add raster parameter, then you can, you can call this method. And this is the add rasters method, uh, defines on ArcGIS, uh, AGS mosaic data raster object. And it, it takes this add raster uh, parameter uh, settings, and then uh, the completion is waiting for a callback. So in this case, I'm defining a, a closure to um, do things after, uh, it's actually a non-blocking call, so actually I have to wait until the add raster is complete before I can uh, reload the raster object and then create a raster layer from that and add it back to the base map. Uh, this is the whole process. So in the app, mm, let's go back and we have a create mosaic raster layer example and the code I just showed you earlier is the code I used to uh, do this. And just click one, one click a button, it triggers the operation happens here. This is actually six imageries. Uh, it, it's a six image collection. Um, this is the Groforth, oops, mm, Groforth Observatory. It's a high resolution imagery, uh, aerial imagery that is taken uh, at Hollywood. Any La La Land fan here? <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's all the demos I'd like to show you uh, f for this iOS example. Again, um, we'll try to sync up these uh, examples uh, to the GitHub repository. You can, this is a public available app. You can just go there and uh, search for the example. You can download them and install on your device. And go back to the slides. And uh, hmm. uh, yeah, and, and these are just a recap of the things I was talking about earlier. This is a cool example for you to create rasters and render raster layers in map. 
And this is a detailed description of uh, how to use these tools to convert raster uh, desktop version of Mosaic dataset to runtime version. And uh, uh, the SQLite Mosaic dataset, um, oh yeah, I, yeah, thanks for reminding me. I actually forgot another example I'd like to show you, which is uh, apply raster functions. It's actually a very important example. <laughs> Get bigger. Yeah. Yeah, I actually forgot two, two or more examples. How can I do that? <laughs> it's just way too relaxing here. So the other two examples I'd like to show you is how, how do you apply uh, raster functions on the raster uh, object. Uh, go back to the code and uh, this uh, is, is NDVI uh, raster function example. Um, uh, so basically, the way you apply a raster function is, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you need a, to load a JSON definition of the raster function. In this case, I have a JSON file that I created earlier that contains um, how you want to do uh, NDVI analysis on a, on, a, on a raster. And you're just reading the URL, the path of the JSON file, and then you can create a raster function object it has a constructor that takes in a JSON file uh, path. And once you create this NDVI function object, and then you can read in the arguments. You can acquire the arguments that define in this uh, NDVI function. And one of those arguments are the raster names, which means this function uh, will take some input rasters uh, for the processing. And this particular NDVI function takes two uh, raster inputs. Uh, one is for the red R, uh, red band, and the other one is for the AR band. So I need to prepare two raster input for this function to work. Right? So I create two raster objects uh, by loading imageries uh, in my device. Uh, one is for the red band, the other one is for the AR band. This is actually a quick bird image um, behind the scene. And then after I set my raster uh, function arguments uh, by set raster, by calling the set raster method, and then um, I can create a raster object. It has a constructor that uh, you can use to create from a function. Right. Once you have this raster object, again, the rest are, this, are very similar. And you just uh, um, bind these rasters to the raster layer. And then you uh, add the raster layer to the map. And this is the NDVI function example. I have an image that is um, the city of San Francisco. Mm. It has some uh, uh, has uh, city blocks and uh, some park with a uh, fair good amount of vegetation, and I can apply a NDVI raster function and applies the on, on the fly processing on my two input imagery and input uh, and output a one one band NDVI image where the uh, pixels with higher uh, uh, luminum value represent higher uh, vegetation coverage. Right. Another function example that I would like to cover is this pen sharpen function. Again, it's, it's similar. Um, you need to initialize this. Oh, this is just the base map layer. Let's move, let's move down here. So you need to initialize the uh, raster function object. Uh, from the uh, JSON file, which contains the definition of this pen sharpen function. And then you uh, read the arguments uh, from the uh, pen sharpen function. It requires two raster inputs. Um, again, I need to create two raster objects. One uh, for the multi spectrum image. Um, the other one as the panchromatic image. For those of you who don't know what pen sharpen function does, it's actually uh, meshing a lower resolution uh, multi spectrum image with a higher resolution panchromatic image to produce a higher resolution multi spectrum image. Right. So um, what I want to show you here is not, it's, it's not just that uh, you can set raster arguments in the raster function. Uh, by calling the set raster method, and also you can set other raster arguments that are not rasters. Right? In this case, the pen sharpen uh, function can take in a weight string, basically defines uh, what's the uh, weight that you want to set for each band, the red band, green band, blue band, and IR band uh, for your input image. Uh, these uh, arguments are actually uh, converted to a uh, string, uh, actually a string of arrays. 
a string of um, double numbers. Uh, and then you can set uh, these non-raster arguments, use the same set arguments method to the raster function object. And then again, create a raster object from raster function and uh, bind your uh, raster object to the raster layer and then add it to the map. Yeah. It's the same image I have here. Uh, let me just zoom in a bit closer to the center. As you can see, the image I'm displaying now is a relatively low resolution uh, uh, colored image. And I, cl I can apply a pen sharpen function using a high resolution pen chromatic image behind the scene. And it gives you this on the fly render result. You can immediately see the resolution has been improved. You can see much more details now after we have pen sharpened uh, the, 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 the two imagery together. Uh, let me just make sure that I have all the demo covered. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So this is all. This is really all the things I want to show you today. Now, and uh, again, my slides is a recap of um, uh, all the code samples I um, I uh, I've shown you today. And yeah. this is just uh, for the online folks. Uh, apply functions. Uh, so next, I'll hand it over to Zhuguan, uh, and uh, he will show you what we are plan being planning to do in the up upcoming update one release. Okay, uh, thanks, Jay. So I just want to mention the, uh, the two of the demos we are showing uh, today, the NDVI and the creation of the Mosaic data set. It's actually uh, the first time we are showing that uh, in public. Uh, so I'm going to give you a quick preview of what's coming in terms of uh, new raster features in the update one, the 100.1 release. Uh, in 100 release, we provided capability to, uh, for you guys to work with local raster data. We have raster object, we have uh, raster layer, raster renderer, and raster functions. Um, in update one, we are going to expand that capability uh, to, by introducing the new raster data source. Uh, so you can work with the newer raster data source, uh, which include the uh, image service and the uh, cloud raster format. That's a new format that you can work with. And uh, I'm going to give you a very quick demos, actually three of the very quick demos to show how it actually uh, works. Uh, this will be released, I believe, in May uh, for the update one. So the first one is the uh, new raster format, uh, the cloud raster format, the CRF. We introduced the CRF, I believe, uh, in desktop 10.4. Um, it's basically designed to give you uh, a quick read and write accessibility. Uh, it also uses a new compression method. So why we are using a new compression method? There's already a lot of compression method out there. Uh, the major benefit is it works really well with the uh, imagery data, such as the elevation data. This LERC compression uh, stands for the um, limited error raster compression. Basically, you can specify a tolerance value, and the algorithm will use that tolerance value to determine which part of the data they are going to throw away when we do the compression. So the end result is, after that, the compressed data take less space than the original data. And the algorithm will guarantee that the maximum error after compression will be smaller than the tolerance you specified. Uh, you can think of it in a way, say we are serving image data uh, through the image service, which also supports the LERC compression. And if I'm just showing an overview of an elevation data, I don't need the kind of higher resolution data. I can set a higher tolerance, uh, the, which results smaller data stream being sent back, and so it's faster. In a way, it's more dynamic, so you can, uh, we can control the amount of data 
we receive from the server based on the uh, application or based on the context of how we use that data. Um, the other point is uh, the lurk compression also supports the uh, lossy compression and lossless. So if you just have the regular RGB color images, we can still use the lurk compression, uh, which is comparable to the other lossless compression like the LZ77 we have. Um, the other major benefit is um, it has extremely fast encoding uh, and decoding time. Comparing to other compression methods, usually it's fast to decode, but it takes longer to encode data. The advantage here is we can dynamically serve the data since it's very fast to encode, so we can re-encode the data before we send it out uh, to the client. And the next one is basically in update one, uh, you will be able to uh, create a new object, the image service raster object, from the service URL directly. And uh, we support the rendering rules predefined on the server side, so you can take advantage of those predefined rendering rules. Uh, and also, since this is a raster object, you will be able to work with the uh, raster functions or raster function template to use that as an input to that raster function chain. So now I'm going to switch uh, to show you a few quick demos. Okay, so this is just a quick uh, test app uh, we have uh, internally, uh, just to show you what we have been working on. The first one, I just want to show you to access a uh, local, sorry, to access a local CRF, Cloud Raster Format <coughs> Dataset, on the local disk. This is essentially a folder structure for the CRF dataset. It contains the metadata over here and also the other uh, pixel data arranged by the level of details. So we have the uh, pixel data arranged by level of detail to give you fast access when displaying it. Now let me just open that dataset directly. So you can uh, zoom in and you can Pan around, so it's it's pretty fast for the uh, for the local data set, and this one is compressed with the uh, lurk compression. Um, in the update one release, uh, you don't if you already have code to work with the data set, you don't have to do anything extra to consume the CRF. You basically pass in instead of a file pass, you pass in that directory name directly and we'll be able to open that as a new raster object so you can do whatever you do with the regular raster object. So next, I'm going to uh, show you how you are going to work with uh, image services. For that, let me switch. So we have this uh, world elevation uh, image services which has a world coverage and uh, I'm going to use two of them. One is the terrain, so the ocean area are all basically zero. And the other one will contain the bathymetry data. Um, so let me just open the terrain service first. Just want to comment here, the World Evaluation Service is a uh, image service that we uh, publish through Access Online. You need a subscriber account to access the image service. It actually contains like three terabytes of image data behind the scene. It has a two meter resolution across the globe. Right, so the back end is the uh, Mosaic data set. I already pre-authenticated with the server for the demo purpose. Uh, but in your case, when you really uh, consume this service, uh, it does require a authentication. So let's just open that layer. Uh, 
Okay, so it take a little bit of time. So what happens here behind the scene is it go to that uh, image service to get the description of the image service, which will tell you the basic information about this particular uh, raster. It's kind of a uh, uh, a view. If, if you can you can see it as a view of that backend mosaic data set. So. Uh, the resolution is uh, two meter. That's the highest resolution. Doesn't mean that it's everywhere two meter. It's just at certain point we have it as a two meter resolution. Uh, it covers the entire world. And since this is the uh, a raster where, as you can see, it's a floating point data. So we are not getting back a picture from the service. We are actually getting back the real data, the elevation data. So you can do the other things you do with a local raster. I'm going to add a uh, color information for this. So those are the predefined color ramp in the SDK, which you can choose, or you can define your own uh, color ramp. Uh, let me switch back. And this feature is actually available in uh, SDK, the 100 release right now. Yeah, this one is available, but the service part is not available. Um, let me add another uh, data, that's the basimetry data, as the background DEM. That is Z factor, so it's easier to see. Now let's apply. So what happens here? It's go back to the same image service, but this time it's going to uh, request the uh, symmetry data as well. Let me see if we can see any. Okay, it's a little bit slow because we are over a slow network. So you can see. Uh, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see better. So this is the, the blend render that we have in the uh, 100.0 radius. Um, so we blend the, the, elevate, the terrain information with the color ramp. And with the DEM, DEM is the basimetry data with the, uh, with the, with the to topo data itself. So you can see the detail of the ocean area. And uh, just to give you an idea about the resolution of this particular elevation service, we can zoom in a little bit. The network may be a little bit slower, so it may take a while to update. Yeah, it is uh, see. Huh. Yeah. So you get the idea. I'll just uh, continue. We, uh, we did try before uh, with the Wi-Fi. It seems to be better. Now let me zoom out. And you can see this, is, this data is in the uh, web uh, Mercator projection, so the polar area is distorted. Since we have this as a true data set, we can do something about it. So next I'm going to demo to um, do a reprojection of this data. Let me just remove this layer. Okay, now let's add. I already prepared a uh, JSON raster function chain, which basically uh, does the same thing as I just manually did by setting the render. So I just open that uh, JSON file. Uh, let's see. So I'll just provide those uh, two input data. Topo, okay, and terrain. And for this one, I'm going to give you uh, give it a different uh, map projection. Uh, I'm just using the uh, WKID or the projection code for the Robinson projection, just for the demo purpose. Now we add it to the map. As you can see, that it's con the same data source is now projected. So you can do a lot more since we have the true raster object here. It's not just a static uh, 
service, you can do more if you choose so on the client side uh, to consume that uh, data. Uh, let me see. So th for the next one, let me close this window and open it again. So the last one I'm going to show accessing accessing CRF data in the cloud. So the first demo I showed we can access CRF data uh, in the local, uh, on the local disk. Uh, this one is for accessing CRF data. There's no service here. It's just the CRF data in the cloud. Let me switch to the browser. So this is kind of uh, reusing uh, one of the uh, demo data set we had for the Fed UC earlier this year. Let me just copy the URL. Just want to add uh, this cloud raster data set is actually uh, stored in the Azure blob storage. And this one is like uh, 370 gig single data set. So it's pretty big, and you can see we have this URL and with this PA underscore 2015.crf. So it's the same layout as I showed earlier. They have the level of detail, they have metadata. Here we just uh, read those uh, information directly over the HTTP connection. This server is a little bit slower, so the latency is about like a two or three seconds for it to come back. Uh, this area covers the uh, state of Pennsylvania. It's a NAEP uh, image. It's a four band. So we can do uh, something that Jay already showed on his like iOS sample. We're doing a uh, NDVI analysis on this. So let me open this. So this is the same thing. I already have a uh, JSON template prepared, which is doing uh, using the raster calculator function we have uh, to, com uh, to combine the IR band and uh, red band. And also the result, uh, we assign a color map to it. Let me just open. So let me give it the IR paint and the red band. Okay, that's it. So as you can see, this is now in color instead of a grayscale for the result of the NDVI. The green color representing the, uh, the vegetation uh, area and the red is the non-vegetation <coughs> area. And uh, we can do more with this to make it look a little bit better since we have access to the world elevation service. We can add that one. So let me go back to get the elevation ah, service URL. Okay. and give it the factor. Now hit the reply. Maybe a little bit slower. So what happens behind scene is it's connecting to two different uh, remote data sources. One is the CRF in Microsoft Azure Cloud. The other one is the elevation uh, service, uh, consuming the elevation service directly. So we can, uh, and then apply a raster function analysis, raster analysis on the fly. Let's just zoom in a little bit. Uh, let's do an area we can see. Again, apology for the, I think it's the, the <coughs> network is a little bit slow. Okay, I'll just do it here. Should come back here. Yeah. And you may notice that the, uh, the, uh, the core idea of raster function is that uh, we are not actually processing the pixels. We're not actually generating physical pixels on the disk, right? The uh, use of raster function is for you to apply uh, definition of uh, processing or analysis on the fly on different kind of data source. It, the data source can be really big, but um, when we are processing uh, those pixels, we only process uh, the pixels that uh, you want to print on the screen. That's the idea of raster function. 
Yeah, so it's, it's still coming, but it should be, uh, you should expect much uh, faster uh, performance in the update one. I think it may be the, uh, the network. So I can toggle off the layer. Uh, this is the original uh, NAP image, and then I can toggle it on. So this is after applying that uh, raster function chain uh, and uh, consuming two different sources remotely, uh, this is the final result of that uh, analysis. So you can see it better, the green area and the, uh, the urban area, you have the red color there. Um, I just want to, lastly, I just want to point out for this particular one, the NDVI with the blend rendering, you could also combine that into a single uh, JSON function chain to uh, achieve the same thing. I just want to show you this one. Again, I already have uh, a predefined function chain to do that. So it's just the same thing. I give it the service URL for the CRF data in the Azure Cloud. And so this one. So we should expect to see the uh, same result. Uh, let me just toggle the layer off. So this is the new one. The, so we have three, uh, three layers on the left. The, last, the top one is the one that when we apply the, uh, the final uh, raster function chain that combine the NDVI and the blend function together. And you can see on the right hand side, we don't have any render applied. So that's the fine. That's the one we did. And the middle one is the one that we manually applied blend render. It just gives you an idea that you can actually have very complex raster function chain. And it's, it's working with either local raster data or remote raster data. It can or combine them together to give you more flexibility on how you want to develop your like, own custom app. Let me just go back to the slide I have. Uh, so that's it for this demo. I just want to do a quick summary of what uh, Zuguang has to cover here. Huh? OK. Yeah. Go to that slide. It's one more slide to, sh to show. Yeah, that, that's the one. All right. So this is just kind of a simple example of what that uh, raster function uh, JSON looks like. It's more descriptive because it's generated by the code. Uh, you already see that. So this last one, I just want to show quickly this uh, last one. This one is actually what we have uh, for the final uh, combining the NDVI and the blend function together. The lower bottom, you can see we extract band from the uh, NAP CRF data set to get the, uh, the red and infrared. And then we do a raster calculator function. On the right hand side, you can see the formula we are using. And then we uh, do a stretch to 0 to 255, apply the color map, and then blend the, uh, with the hue shade that's coming from the image service. Uh, and then you would see the result. So I'll hand back to Jay right. for the summary. Yeah, I, I just I just quick summary of what Zhuang has been covered here. So in update one, uh, what the new feature we're going to add is this support for this new cloud raster format. Uh, this new cloud raster format, um, some of you may not heard about it, but it's actually a new format we release. Uh, we're already releasing the 10.4 version of ArcGIS Desktop and Pro. Uh, this format is optimized for uh, both uh, read and write. And it will expect to use it intensively through this new uh, cloud distributed raster analysis workflow. So we'll be seeing a lot of people generating this kind of format. This is optimized uh, not uh, only to be used uh, in desktop apps and should be also optimized to using runtime apps too. 
That's one, one, one point here. And there's another, another point which is in update one, you'll be able to create rasters from remote source. The remote source could be an in service uh, URL or a uh, cloud raster that is stored in uh, uh, cloud storage. Uh, S3 cloud storage or Azure storage are the two cloud storage we support at the moment. Yeah, and then we'll keep on adding new functionalities, uh, especially a uh, new set of functions, building functions you can use so you can uh, construct more custom workflows using Rust function. All right, thank you. That's all we are uh, showing you today. So, any questions? No? Again, thank, thank you very much. Okay, there's one. Uh. Right. What would be the direction that you guys would recommend so that my users who often have to go offline mm -hmm. can check out a segment of my raster data, work in the field, and then right. they, they won't be editing it, but they want to be able to take it into the field. But when you say you, you, when you say you, people want to go offline, that means they don't have any internet connections? Or? Yeah, so their typical yeah. workflow is they're in the office, right. they pick an area they're going to be working for the day, and then they right. load the data on their Right. We'd like to disconnect them from mm -hmm. having to physically transfer tile packs on their iPad. Right. Okay, you just connect to a mm -hmm. cloud service, get what you need, and you're done before you leave. Right. So uh, the, there's difference here. When we're talking about you can have access to uh, like CRF rasters in the cloud, that means you still need to maintain this uh, internet connection. I know the workflow you're mentioning, which is uh, you actually need to create a tile package uh, from your image source, and then you copy your tile package to your device, and then you can work completely offline without ever connect to internet, right? So that's the current story right now. So uh, the purpose of supporting local data is that you don't have to create uh, the tile package. You can just move your data to your device. Right, you move the data that you want to use to device in their uh, raw format. Right, if you have JPEG imagery or TIFF imagery, I, I just want to add yeah. uh, the the we actually have a similar feature planned. It's basically you can save a portion of the data directly off right. the remote data source, mm -hmm. uh, but it's not going to be available in update one. It might make it to the uh, end of the year release, so you can save it. Right. Uh, e, uh, the current format we have is probably the GeoTIFF, uh, the JPEG, and also the CRF. We are probably planning to uh, let you to save the data as a CRF directly. Right, so yeah, so this new feature coming will provide a new method on the raster object, which allows to save uh, the raster object to the disk, uh, to the storage on your device, basically, yeah. Right. Hmm. But it's probably the end of the year, so. Not end sure. of the year. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. we, we just want to hear, uh, hear any feedbacks or the features that you guys want to have, right. and we can try to make it available for yeah. you guys. Yeah. It, oh, no. Do you, do you hmm. have Sorry. some way description of the cloud um, We do have it, but um, I would say that the description is a little bit too brief at the moment. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know you can you can search in our help system and find a specific uh, topic about cloud rest format. But uh, not just you asking about that, but also also other people uh, mentioning that we have lack of documentation on that format. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I I think uh, with that uh, the the lurk compression we already have an open source library. And also we have the JavaScript library uh, for reading it. Uh, but the part that's not being published, I think it's the container of that pixel data arranged by the level of detail. That container, I don't think Right, is we don't have a really uh, like in-depth description of this cloud rest format as a, as a standalone topic yet. It would be nice if you can predict what size right. raster you will get right. after all this travel. Right, yeah. right you're right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I just want to say that um, we actually uh, please do fill in the survey. We actually long for your suggestions <laughs> on what we need to add to runtime SDK uh, because um, 
we have this relatively short releases, and uh, we're trying to uh, make our development like uh, requirement driven. So if you have any features you want to add, uh, like really urgently to our SDK, please do let us know. Yeah, we'll really value our opinions. <laughs> yeah. You don't. Know. You don't. Oh. <laughs> Just keep it coming. <laughs> keep it coming. <laughs> All right. Any more questions? No? Again, thank you very much for staying. I know it's, it's the party time, so <laughs> you want to get up here and uh, have a yeah. beer thank or you. something. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>